Hello, this is Larry of LarryRicker.com, and I'm going to show you in this video how to create the screenshots necessary to submit your app to the iTunes uh, Connect App Store. They've changed the interface a bit. Um, they've reworked the interface, and you no longer have to produce a screenshot in each of the screenshots for each of the different uh, devices, whether it's an iPhone 4, 5S, 5, uh, iPhone 6, 7, 8, all the different formats, you just have to produce one format and then you can it automatically converts it from two different formats from the, the iPhone format and from the iPad format into all the formats that you need for all the different devices. So they've simplified it a bit but if you take a screenshot on one of your devices unless maybe you have the latest device that's just out um, none of the devices I have, which are more legacy devices, older devices, um, support the format that is needed for the iTunes Connect and the App Store. So I'll show you how to convert those in this video. Doing a uh, screenshot for submitting to the iTunes Connect Store is to actually get a screenshot. So you should pick an iPhone device and an iPad device because you're going to need, need two different devices of the two different form factors. And the idea is I've got an uh, iPhone 6 Plus here and it's roughly similar shape to most of the other iPhones. It's just a different size. And uh, I've got also got an iPhone 5S here, but I'm going to do the iPhone 6 Plus. You should pick the form factor where your app looks the best which for me is the iPhone 6 Plus. So I'm going to start with that. First thing you want to do is do a screen capture. Now, my first comment about um, screen captures is they've gotten a lot more difficult since going to um, the latest version of OS, well, actually the iOS 10. Ever since uh, iOS 10, it seems like it's rather difficult to press the home button and the power button simultaneously. And I'll try to do that to capture a couple of screenshots here. But um, you basically press them, you gotta kind of press them hard. Well, you can see I'm pressing it and then it's doing this weird thing. So you quick, you quick press them and you press them all the way down and hard. And if you get lucky, you get a good screenshot. I'm going to try a couple like this and I'm just going to capture the different screens. Okay, there's none in there. Okay, this is a nice screen. Now what happens often is I'll sort of press them out of order and what happens is the screen will close. Like if I press the home button before the, the power button, it'll drop you out of the application. Then you got to go back into the application in order to continue doing screenshots. I researched this and there's a nice um, accessibility feature where with iOS 10 and 11 where you can bring this little thing out on your screen and you press it and you can do a screenshot that way. Now I'm going to get to a different screen first. So now I want to do a screenshot of this screen. So I press here and then I do screenshot. And I can also do it with the buttons. And it'll capture my screenshots. And then I want to do the reminder view. And I'll do that. And I'll do it with the keyboard in place as well. Yeah. You can have too many screenshots, and it's obviously going to be a lot of work to convert all these, but um, you know, it gives you a sense of, you know, the more pictures you have, you can pick and choose which ones you want. You can sort of be selective like a photographer and choose the ones that you like the best. So um, let's say I'll just set up uh, some fake appointments here with my reminders and uh, say 11 a.m. is the uh, time for brunch. 
and so I can set a reminder for that and then I could do go into the other reminder view and I want to have two reminders up there one that's on time and one that's late so I'm going to add another reminder here but I'm going to make it earlier today like uh, um, 9 a.m. meet career advisor And uh, you can see there's some typing, autocorrection. So now I have two appointments up on that screen. So now I want to do another screenshot to show the reminders, the to-do list in the app. So I can just do a screenshot that way. And then um, it's usually, oh, there's a couple of other screens that I wanted to catch. There's the rename screen where you can rename a section. And you can use this touch and screenshot that way. And I can also do the main screen. I want to rename this project. And I could do a screenshot there like that. So now I've got a few screenshots. So I'm, I'm good now. Now the way you do this um, accessibility thing here on the side, this easy way to do screenshots, is you go into your um, iPhone and you go into settings. And then you want to go into general. And you go into accessibility. And then under accessibility, there is this assistive touch here. And by default, it's off. So what you do is you turn it on, and then you go into the top level menu, and you put in um, what you want to have, a screenshot. Um, and it's defaulted to screenshot. So that's the customized menu. And you can add other things that you want to put in there. I, I just like if you want to bring up the notification center or get into these. This is for uh, people that may have some form of disability, and, and uh, it helps them to get around the iOS applicate, uh, iOS uh, ecosystem and, and perform what they need to do inside the, the app. But because of the hitting the power button and the home button is even difficult for me, um, it certainly would be difficult for somebody that only had one hand. Uh, this little uh, accessibility thing is quite easy for doing screenshots. So now that you got your screenshots, <clears throat> next step is you would connect to I, iPhoto and uh, launch that application or photos. I mean, not, not iPhoto. That's the old app. You go into photos and then you can import the screenshots from your device and get them that way. But it's kind of a bloated way to get them. Um, as you can see, the reminder I just set uh, popped up on the screen. I can mark that as complete. So um, the other way um, to do it, there's a few ways, is you could just sort of text them to your, uh, to your Mac computer. So um, I would just email address and then um, I can put in here the local photos that I've got on this device, the screenshots that I just captured. Okay, that doesn't want to cooperate right now. So the other way we can do that is we can go to photos and then we can go 
and actually select our photo and press the action key. And then you can go through and actually select the screenshots that you want to send. And I'm going to do just some of them so I could demonstrate another way to do this. So one, two, three, four. I'll do four of them for now. And then I'll leave. Um, I got a lot of them. Okay, so I'll do six now. And then I'll send those via SMS, text message, to Marriott. The overhead of launching the kind of bloated app like photos and then importing them and then exporting them out of photos and then you also have to delete them later because you want to free up the space so this kind of avoids a lot of that now if um, so they did arrive so they came in that way and if you just to complete that let's not jump around too much um, so they, they arrived here and I see I have six images arrived so what I would do is click here, my screen, and my photos will, or my new screenshots will show up here. I'll open up Finder, and I want to get Finder, navigate that into the directory where I want to drop these pictures. So that's Documents. And this app is the class organizer, so I'll have a, an individual directory for that, and I have a directory for the iPhone. So then I click on the first screenshot, and I can just drag that over and drop that into the directory. And I'll scroll up, grab the next screenshot. Got to wait for it to select, and you drag it over. And wait for it to go plus on you and then drop it. Try to be a little patient. It can be a little frustrating dealing with the latency. That didn't look right. So which one am I on now? I did one. Two. It's the third one. So hover over the area where you want to drop the screenshot until it turns into a plus and then drop it. Wait for that plus or else it's just not going to work properly. Okay, so those were those six photos. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Now another way we can do this is take the same screenshot. We're in the Photos app. 
So we've done this one, this one, this one, two, three, four, five, six. So we'll start with this one. That's the next one we want to send over. We can do the action key, and then we can choose the transport mechanism would be airdrop. Now in order to make airdrop work, what you have to do is you have to turn on the okay, the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth. So those two are on. And then on my Mac computer, I also have to turn on the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Now they don't have to be on the same network for this to work. So we go back into photos and then I can choose the airdrop and then just wait a second for the computer to show up. Meanwhile I could select multiple screenshots. So I get the remaining six. And then I can press the airdrop button here. Okay, so to turn on airdrop on the Mac, you need to find airdrop here, and then allow me discovered by everyone. Okay, and then once we have that going, then going back, let me just move this out of the way. So as you can see now, on the iPhone, I've got the six photos selected and screen, six screenshots selected, and I can see my MacBook Pro here. So I touch with the MacBook Pro and it'll start transmitting the files over from the iPhone to the MacBook Pro. So now in the downloads fo fo folder, I get the five screenshots that I sent over. Yeah, problem is I sent six. But anyway, there they are. And And I can just drag and drop those photos. So that's two options besides using the photo app to import your screenshots. So now the next step here is to convert these files into the format that I want for, or I should say, the format that iTunes Connect needs to submit your apps to the App Store. So I'll open up iTunes Connect and you know show you dragging the, the screens the dragging the screenshots over into the file after I get done converting the first file. So in order to get the dimensions, 
I've saved those. You can go through the Apple instructions if you wish. And um, I've put them into my project status, um, project status pro uh, app here, just to have them handy. So you can just right click on the first file and click on open with. Just actually you don't click on open with, you hover over open with. And then you have to pause here for a period of time until your options of apps shows up. Now for each one of these screenshots, you can see down here the actual size of the screenshot. So this one's from an iPhone 7, um, regular, not plus, and it has the screen dimensions of 750 by 1334. And then these are from an iPhone 6 plus, and they have the dimensions in portrait mode of portrait mode of 1125 by 2001. Now, as you can see, I need to get them, for the iPhone, I need to get them into the portrait size of 1242 by 2208. That's the ideal format. So in order to do that, what I'm going to do is use the GIMP application. So in order to do that, I right-click on the file. If you don't have a, a mouse with two buttons, what you need to do is hold down the control key and then click on, click on your magic mouse and then it'll give you the, the right click menu. Then you open the screenshot in GIMP and then it'll automatically import it. Now to convert it you click on the image menu and then you go to scale image and then you use the dimensions here 2208 by 20 oh I'm sorry 1242 by 2208 let me just drag those over so they're in sight so you click image scale image and then you type in the numbers 1242 and then if you automatically tab through because it scales and it keeps the same aspect ratio from one dimension to the other it'll populate the height with 2209 but that's not acceptable to Apple so it needs to be a 2208 but if you go and you change the 2209 to a 2208 and then tab out of that now it changes the other width dimension to 1241. So the way to get rid of this problem, you just keep seesawing back and forth and your dimensions are never right and believe me they won't work in iTunes Connect. You have to click on this uh, rubber band here and break the aspect ratio between the two dimensions and then adjust the 2208 dimension like that. Click on the scale button and it'll, what it'll do is it'll scale the image and then it'll sort of zoom in on it after it's done scaling. And it'll kind of blow it up a little bit. I've already preset the dimensions but um, to 25% so it looks okay. But you can downsize it to 12.5% or you can leave it at 25%, but if it's at 50%, what you're going to end up with is just a really blown up image and you really can't see the whole screen, so you might not be able to decide what a good descriptive name for the screenshot is. So 25% is good for both the iPhone and for the iPad screenshots I'll do in a few minutes. So now what you need to do is export the photo. You don't have to save it, you just export it. The default format that photos get saved in in GIMP is not the format that you need. You need a PNG file, so don't even bother saving it. It's just going to waste more hard disk space for you. So you navigate to your directory, which is by default where you loaded the files from, and then you give it 
a uh, descriptive name. And I like to put the dimensions onto the description of the file. So that would be a 1242x2208. Now you'll notice I'm using a very specific format and this is sort of a trick that I've learned from uh, some web developers is it's, it's nice to put like an underbar in between the, 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 the useful part of the name and the uh, dimensions. And what that allows you to do is if you want to change one or the other, um, you can just double click on one or the other and then type over it and it'll rename that file, at least that portion of it. And if you have to deal with a lot of files, it's kind of handy. Then you click on the export button down here in the lower right corner. And it'll come up with another dialog. Don't change any of the options unless they look like unless they don't look like this. I want save resolution and save creation time. I don't want to mess with these interlacings and background and gamma and um, layer offset. And just export. Now we're done with the first screenshot. Now I usually close these right away. And the reason I do that is because oh, I run out of memory. Not really, it just it makes the computer slower to have a lot of them open. And since you have to deal with a lot of files, it's, it's not good. So now we'll go to the next file. And now this time I'll hold down the control key and I'll left click on it. And what that'll be is if I right clicked on it and the menu will pop up and you hover over the open width and then scroll down to GIMP and then click with the left button if you're holding the control button. The alternative is to click on the right button. I'll repeat this again. So image, scale image, and then we'll pull up those dimensions again. I've got them right here in my Project Status Pro app. So I go to 12 42 and then tab and it defaults to 2209 and that's not good and then you break the aspect and type 2208 tab out of the field and then press the scale wait for the scaling to complete and you see the progress across the bottom here and then you file export and I always like to look put the a useful name and the dimensions both dimensions in the file. You don't have to do that, but if you don't do it, you're going to wish you had. Because if you kind of abbreviate it and say, oh, it's like 12 by 22, and then you know you don't put the exact numbers, you're going to look at a list of files and just not know what you got there, and it's just going to make your life more difficult. I know it's a little extra typing, but uh, you can put, mess around with your your clipboard and fill it up with like maybe the dimensions or something just cut and paste if you're not a good typist so now we did one one two we go to the third one so I'm going to right click open with and click on GIMP Now the alternative, I'll show you that in the next uh, screenshot, or next, uh, yeah, next screenshot. So scale image. You put in the dimensions, 1242. Click on the paper clip or rubber band and 
break the aspect ratio, tab through, and then you click on the scale button. Now after you process a great deal of these files, GIMP starts to get a little uh, tired maybe and starts acting a little wonky. So sometimes if you click on the button and it doesn't seem to respond, you know, it'll pop up and you'll click on it several times and you, you think you clicked on it but it didn't really seem to respond. What you can do is press the enter key and it sort of just gets it back to life. Same thing on this dialog when it's exporting from the PG, PMG. You can just click on the export and that'll work sometimes but then sometimes it gets wonky and you just hit the enter key and then it'll sort of just jolt back to life. Now to speed this up, you know, I, I know you're thinking this is dragging on, what you can also do is you can do file, open, and that kind of puts you in the same place where you've been importing these files. You can just click on the next file and click on open. I find that may have changed a few, or that may have speeded it up a few milliseconds. Everything, every second matters, right? Again, break the aspect ratio. If you try to change that second dimension and you don't break the aspect ratio, it's going to scale according to the aspect ratio and your dimensions are going to be off. And I get a little unnerving. So I've scaled a couple of these. You got the general idea. Just repeat this 10,000 times and you're done. Or however many screenshots you've got. You have to do this for the um, screenshots from the iPad. Now I should show you the screenshots from the iPad as well. Let's see if I've got any. Gee, look, I got a whole directory of them. So uh, you can just, for iPad screenshot, this is from an iPad 2. And if I click on one of these screenshots, it'll show me the dimensions. It's 768 by 1024. Now what Apple wants is 2048 by 2732. So that's a much higher resolution for a 12.9 inch display off of something that's more like a 8 or 10 inch display on my iPad 2. So in order to get it up to that resolution, you use GIMP. So just right click, open with, and then click on GIMP. Okay, once the screenshot for the iPad loads into GIMP, what you do is the same step as the iPhone. You do scale, image, scale, image. And this time you use the iPad dimensions down here. And the first dimension is 2048. And that puts you very close to what you want for the height, except not exactly. And if you don't break the aspect ratio and add that extra pixel, Apple won't accept it. So then uh, you scale.
And this is a good example of how the zoom is helpful. So at this point, I usually drop it down for the iPads to 12.5%, so I can get a good screenshot here. And then this is my to-do list, so I just do File, Export, It'll put me in the same director where the screenshot came from, and I just call it to do list, and I give it the dimensions 20, 48, 27, 32. Then you click on the export key. If it doesn't seem to respond, sometimes just hit name enter key. We'll get it going. And then click on the export. And that time it worked. So then I'll close this, discard it, because we don't want to save it. It's just going to waste a lot of disk space. So if you don't put the name of the uh, or the, if you don't name the screenshots, as I recommend, with the dimensions in the file name, you can click on the file, and then the Mac OS will calculate the size of the file and put, print the numbers down here at the bottom, and you can use that to cross-check against the 2048 versus the 2732. So we have a pretty good screenshot. But the ultimate uh, test is going to be we open up iTunes Connect and drop these in on the interface and have Apple accept them. We're going to work on the Class Organize app, and you have to go to the Prepare for Submission, and you put in your description. I can do that later. We're really concerned about the screenshots here. So in order to submit these screenshots, it used to be you had to create screenshots for each different dimension, and um, it was a lot more work, and that meant you had to scale the images for a 4.7 display, for a 4 inch display, for a 3.5 inch display, and then for the iPad you had to do it the same on at least three different form factors. It was just uh, consume your life. So first step to do is go into the media manager. That's that link right here. And once you're in the media manager you still have all the screenshots that you created for all the different size. Of course, I've changed the UI, so I have to click on the Delete All button and just delete all my screenshots. And now, to redo them, what I'm going to do is drag them in from these screenshots that I saved. So first for the iPhone, I've got a few screenshots here that I've saved. So I'll just... Um, Start with the first one, drag it over, and drop it into the 5.5 inch display. And if it's good, it'll come up with a screen that looks like this with a little dialogue explaining that you're going to use these 5.5 screens over and over for all the different form factors, which is wonderful. Then you can go gra grab another one. That one was also good. I'm not perfect. I often make mistakes. So um, there could be one of these will get rejected, and I'll be able to demonstrate what happens. Yep, oh, there you go. This is what happens when a screenshot is not the correct dimensions. Dimensions of one or more of the screenshots are wrong. So we dragged in this last one here, and we can go over here and look at this dimensions 1241 by 2208. So as you can see, what I did wrong 
was I didn't break the aspect ratio between the two dimensions on this screenshot. And when I typed in 2208, it corrected the, the first uh, dimension to 1241 instead of 1242, and it wasn't valid. So that screenshot's no good. I can fix it, and that's easy to do. I can, I can demonstrate that. Let's drag another one over here. And that one's also good. Okay, so we got four out of five. Not bad. Now let's go over to the section. So it's going to automatically in the 4.7 display use the 5.5 inch. So those automatically got dis scaled. And for the 4 inch display, which is like the iPhone 4 and 4S, it's going to use uh, the 5.5 and scale it automatically. And then for the 3.5 inch display, which is a little smaller for older phones, if um, they actually supported iOS 9, uh, it's, they don't. So um, they're sort of been abandoned by Apple. So um, now we want to repeat the same thing for iPad, and, and we've got a few form factors here 12.9, 9.7, uh, maybe just two. Okay, so um, I'm sure mine's a 9.7, and I had to scale it up to a 12.2, so or 12.9. So we'll delete all the photos again, hit the delete button, and then we'll grab the one iPad photo that I did scale already, the to-do list, and then drag that over and see if I did okay on that one. Okay, and then I get this dialog, which means I was successful. So that's all good. Now I just have to repeat it a whole bunch of times offline and finish up all my screenshots. But in the meantime, I'll show you what you can do if you get one of these files wrong. So I got, that one's good. This is the one I got wrong. So if, if, you, if you mess up, which I obviously did, you can just um, open that one file up. That's cl called class name. I can go to GIMP and do file open, but I'll have to navigate out of the iPad section back into the iPhone section and go to the class name file. It says it's 1242 by 2208, but it's not. So then we do the scale again on it. You can just do an image scale image and we have to break the rubber band and correct it and then scale it, and then File, Export, and you can just keep the same name and click Export and choose Replace, and Export again, and now you got a good image. And just to confirm that we got a good image, we will bring it up over here, Class name, it's at the top because it was last file changed, drag that over into iTunes Connect, drop it, and we're golden. Okay, and that concludes my video on how to get your screenshots of all different older devices at, in different form factors scaled properly for iTunes Connect to submit your app to the App Store. So if you like this video, click on the like below, and I'll catch you on the next one.